Okay, now we're at the point where we want to begin drawing. I want to come back to this that I filled out on my Charlie Brown guy. I counted across that he has 10 centimeters and up and down there's eight centimeters. So if I'm gonna go from one centimeter to two centimeters, the enlarged size means that it's gonna be 20 centimeters because I'm doing times two and eight times two would be 16 centimeters. So that's my goal here. Right now, just working with my grid, I wanna make sure that I have 10 places across and eight places up and down before I start my drawing. So I'm just gonna double check that my grid that I made is gonna fit this picture here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I have enough going across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I actually have an extra going down. So I'm just gonna start drawing by taking a look at where in this drawing is Charlie's head. And if I look here, his ear is one, two, three down. So I'm gonna go one, two, three down. And his ear kind of crosses this line here. You can sort of see right there. That means that his head, the circle of his head, it's starting right around this place here. And I'm going to draw Charlie's head from this place, which is this one. It crosses over this line and goes down just a little bit. And then his ear comes off of that and crosses this line. So right about there. And I want to go up and make more of his head. And it's crossing this like here. So I'm just looking at this place from here to here and it's crossing right about there. And then this part of his head is crossing over this grid. And when I look at it, I don't feel like I just drew that high enough. So I'm gonna go back and start my slope a little bit differently for his head. Looks like it's more like this. And then here's the top of his head. It starts going across this space just like this. And I'm just going to copy those lines showing that I can just recreate square by square what's in it. I'm going to keep going, keeping track. Now I'm on this downward slope where it kind of comes across this inside corner. And his head is just this little part here. And now I've got this where it slopes down towards there and into the next space where his ear starts and it, his ear kind of goes like this. I've got his ear, but maybe I didn't go down far enough. Uh, I think it's okay. Maybe a little bit more. And then his ear kind of goes in here, a little bit in this line, and then it starts going down towards the bottom of his head. And I'm going to kind of curve around here until I get back to there where it's going to drop down into this next one. And if you look here, it goes about halfway down, and then it ends almost at the bottom of this one. So I'm kind of crossing here. I feel like my Charlie Brown's head isn't quite as round as the original, but pretty close. And I'm just using these, this grid to help me create Charlie's head. I feel like up here is where partly the rounding isn't happening. Okay, and you can start to see that Charlie's starting to appear. His mouth is right here. Here's this line. And the bottom of his face, I'm going to put his mouth right about here. And then I want to come up. There's one, two places, and his nose is right above that. And you can start to see Charlie is starting to appear. His eye is right on this line. And his other eye is right around this line. 
his eyebrows are just above this line. And then he's got this little bit of hair. His hair starts around right, I'm looking at this corner, so it must be right about here. Comes down almost to his eyebrow. It crosses the line and goes up. And kind of crosses over and does a curl. And I'm looking here, this is curling just above this grid line, just like it did here. And there I've got Charlie's face. I could start then taking more time and drawing in his neck, which looks like it's right about on this line. His collar comes like this. Okay, so basically you get the idea. We're just going to take this grid that you created here on your graph paper. You've enlarged this to two times or three times or four times or five times, five times bigger. Mine is one to two, which means I had one centimeter in my original and two centimeters in my new. And when I'm finished with this, I'm going to take a black marker and I'm going to go over all of Charlie's lines here. I'll just do his hair just to give an example. Oops, looks like I didn't go over that enough. And I'll actually have thinner markers from you guys. I just kind of lost his ear there. And here's where the really cool art part of this happens. Once you've done all of this drawing and math and you've got your grid, we're actually going to go in and erase the grid. And by erasing the grid, it's going to start to look like you freehanded this. And once that is finished, once you've erased your whole grid, this is why you don't want your lines to be too dark, then you'll be able to go back and add color and really make your drawing pop, okay? So it's not exactly perfect. As a matter of fact, I feel like I did a little bit better job of his ear when I was in pencil than with my marker. But you can see that even if you don't have amazing art skills, you can take this idea of scale factor and just using space by space by space on the grid and recreate your own comic strip drawing. That's our project. You're going to work on it during testing. Um, so on testing days when you're in math class and not testing in math, you'll have some time to do some art and math at the same time. This will be due on Wednesday, May 17th when testing is finished. And uh, Ms. Kenny and I really hope you guys enjoy the project.